Hi, I'm Dirk and this is my Google Pixel 4 XL smartphone. It's some three years old now and the battery becomes weaker and weaker. That's not unusual after that time, but currently I have to remember somewhere during the day to recharge so that in the afternoon the cell phone still has enough power. This becomes a bit annoying and therefore I'll now replace the battery with a new one. And you can watch me. I ordered spare parts and tools for the replacement from iFixit. No, they have neither ordered nor sponsored this video. But they have all the parts, even an original replacement battery from Google with adhesive stripes. There is only one additional thing I need, isopropanol from the pharmacy. We'll see. This is the device. As all modern smartphones, it is held together with lots of adhesive. I have to cut through it to open the device. Best way to do this is to heat it up. I use iFixit's heat retaining eye opener. Internet reviews on this item are mixed, but I want to give it a try. Our microwave oven is broken, so the air fryer does not produce french fries today, but heats up the eye opener. With 90 degrees Celsius, I'm on the safe side heat wise and 6 to 8 minutes heated up sufficiently. Let's start opening. I put the eye opener onto the back of the device and press it on for several minutes. Then I use the suction cup and pull, but not too much. I use the pick to open a gap between back and frame of the case. The first attempt fails, the adhesive is still too strong. Some more heating, all in all we are now at 10 minutes and finally I manage to shift the pick into the phone case. I push it to both ends of the shorter edge and cut through the adhesive. A second pick prevents the adhesive from reconnecting. I use further picks for the other edges. Fortunately a set consists always of six of them. Unlike the internet says, I can cut through the rest without any more heating. But I do need to take care not to cut too deep into the device with all its tiny parts. Having freed the fourth edge, I can finally open the backside, but be careful, there is still the cable to the wireless charger. Before continuing here, I unplug the old battery. Its connection is behind a clip which is fixed with four screws, which are all different. I park them on a magnetic plate which is really helpful to keep things in order during the operation. Finally, I can remove the clip and unplug the battery. I do always apply force from the side of the plug and not from the middle. It could jam and break. Now the same operation on the backside connection. Unscrew the clamp, this time the screws are equal and lever the jack. In principle the phone is now open, but the fun is only about to begin. So far I have cut through the adhesive, but it is still on the parts. It's time for the isopropanol. I put it generously on the adhesive, let it sink in and rub on it with a spudger. This is quite tedious and I get an insight. Boah, ist das ein Ätzzeug. I work along the edges of the backside. The alcohol affects the surface, so I continue without it, which makes it even more unnerving. And it's only half of the job. The stuff is also on the frame which is made of metal, so alcohol can be used in heavy doses. This finally leads to a more or less complete removal of this gunk. Now the new battery enters the stage. An internet instruction suggested to test the new battery before starting the assembly. I plug it in and start the phone. And it works. Great, so I can continue. I unplug the new battery and start removing the old one. Easier said than done. The battery is fixed with not less than three adhesive stripes. I cut through the common end piece to remove them one by one. In theory, they should come off in one part by a constant pull. Practically, this works neither for the first, nor for the second, nor for the third strip. So alcohol becomes again the crucial helper here. A dribble on the left, a dribble on the right, the more the better. I start using the pick on the battery, add some alcohol to it and some more better safe than sorry and 
finally the adhesive gives in and the battery comes out, undamaged. Only lots of adhesive remain and it's even more disgusting than the gunk from the case. I use the standard procedure in such cases, alcohol, and don't be shy of it. Then I rub the gunk away and finally I dry the surface. There is enough stuff to practice extensively. Finally, the battery place is freed from the adhesive leftovers, at least to large extent. So disassembly is done. Now everything has to come together again in reverse order. First step, new adhesive. Three new stripes for the battery. They are packaged in not less than three layers of plastic protective film. I remove the first of them and test the placement. The adhesive should not cover the connection below the battery. Then I remove the second protective film and connect the stripes to the battery. I connect the battery preliminary for a second time to be sure that it is placed correctly. Then I remove the final adhesive protection and press the battery into its place. My stripes are a bit more to the top than the original, but that's no problem. So the new battery is in. I disconnect it again and continue with the back plate of the phone case. The battery exchange package contains a complete new adhesive stripe for it, also covered in several protection layers. I have exactly one attempt to place this stuff correctly, so this requires thoughtful operation. The adhesive is packaged in a way that it should be connected to the back plate first. I remove the first protection film, but only in the upper part. This allows me to position the whole piece as exactly as possible in the lower part without everything gluing together immediately. Once it fits, I finally start connecting it at the top and then slowly and steadily to the bottom. This way the adhesive is placed correctly and without accident. Now I reconnect the back plate to the rest of the device. Remember, press sideways onto the connectors to prevent jamming and damage. After that I reconnect the clamp with its two screws. Same game with a battery plug. Finally I can connect it permanently and cover it with its tiny protection clamp and its even tinier four unique screws. Before re-gluing the back plate I recheck that everything works, turning on, logging in and the camera. There is not much more I can do as the new battery is charged just above 2%. So finally I put the back plate back onto the device. For this I remove the protection foil and only now I recognize that I could have removed the blue foil way earlier in the process as there is another red protection stripe on the adhesive itself. I remove that one too, put the back plate on and fix it by pushing it well into place. And this ends the battery swap. I needed about two hours working time and had success. Now I charge the battery completely, then use the device until it is completely discharged and turns off and then charge it once again until it is completely full. This calibrates the battery. Meanwhile I can use the device just normally. So conclusion time. My cell phone still works and the battery now has a decent lifetime again. And I'm glad that I did it on my own because today I learned two things. First. It's not that difficult after all. You have to open the device, remove the old battery, put the new one in, close it and you are done more or less. No, and that's the second thing, it is made complicated. And I do not mean all those small parts, these small screws and clamps etc. I mean these devices are small, so are their parts. If you have the right tools and some patience, this is totally manageable. No. What I talk about is this glue stuff. I mean, remember what I had to do just to open the device. I had to heat it up, but not too much. I had to suck on it, but not too hard. I had to cut through the glue, but not too deep. And then I had these parts and they were over and over full with this glue stuff and I had to put lots of isopropanol onto it to get rid of at least most of it. And what was left over? This here resembles to me something from an advertisement from an anti-pimple medication and honestly this is not how things should work. 
I mean, no one can tell me that there is no space in these devices to just put some other screws in which hold the back plate so that you do not need any glue for this at all. And the same for the battery. Why not using a clamp just with the connectors that we saw and you do not need any glue there either. The only thing that this whole glue stuff does is preventing people from repairing their devices. And I mean, okay, then you might be able to sell more new ones. But on the other hand, I don't want to know how many cell phones, which are totally perfect and which only need a replacement battery, how many of those are scraped and put into landfill. And that's simply idiotic. After all, I liked what I had with iFixit therefore. They had the instructions in the internet, they have the tools, they have the replacement parts. I can order this as it's delivered in a timely manner. This is something one can work with. And therefore, I'd like to end this video with a call. Don't be afraid. Use these resources in the internet. Purchase replacement parts. Be careful to take original parts, especially when it comes to the battery. Buy some isopropanol against this glue gunk and then do it. After that, you will have your phone in a new condition, you will have new battery life, you will have saved lots of money and after all, you can put such a nice sticker on it. And that's a value of its own, isn't it? So, and with this, my video ends and I say see you next time and thanks for watching. dinner time and therefore I'll stop this. It wasn't that good anyway.